Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris video. Today it will be about making your very first map script. Um, and we will take as example, uh, we'll try to make uh, a switch that that makes a chest appear on a map. So, but we, we will actually need two maps for this, for this example, an inside map. and an outside map you will you will see why in just a moment chapter 12 outside okay so outside map I set light world music over world and very quickly just make a wall with a, a cave entrance and the inside map will be a cave for this example with just a standard room okay let's take the correct floor of caves And um, let's, let's make an entrance like this. Destination the transporter Okay. This transporter will go to outside default destination and the outside one will go to the inside map default destination. Okay, so we are ready. Uh, what we are gonna do is make a switch and we haven't seen switches yet. They are here create switch. So a switch is a button that the hero can activate. Uh, it can be a walkable switch. This one will is a, is a usual one from A Link to the Past. Um, the hero can activate the switch by walking on it, so it's just a, a button. Or you can do an, a switch that can be activated with uh, the bow by shooting an arrow or you can also do a solid switch uh, this one can be activated with the sword they don't exist in A Link to the Past but they exist in a kind of time for example so we will do a very standard walkable switch from A Link to the Past with a sprite switch and a sound uh, switch also yes no, I just want to save. Yes, didn't want to close. We can already try that. Let's tell the game manager that we are starting on chapter 12 slash inside. Okay, so this is a, a switch from Ring to the Past. Um, the sprite, the switch sprite is called switch, and you can see it in the sprite editor. And it is switch. So you can customize your switch sprite, but um, it must have two animations: an activated animation and an inactivated animation. And then we are going to make a chest and put the sword in the chest because why not? Save the treasure state. Um, so we are saving the the open or, or closed state of this particular chest. 
in a safe game variable that we will call um, chapter 12 cave chest okay so for now we haven't made anything dynamic in this map we have a chest, we have a switch but to connect them and make the switch uh, show the chest we we will have to edit the map script so uh, so far we we saw the item script in particular the flippers in the previous chapter but we haven't made map script any map script yet map script are the most frequent one because uh, They they ha they will have all the code that defines the di dynamic behavior of 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 each map. Uh, so you can do you can right click on your map and and you see there are two files here open map so this is this editor actually and open map script it is a Lua file associated to your map and if you check the data of your of your quest each map has two files a dot dat file so this is the data file of your map the one that you are editing graphically here you can actually see all the tiles definition and we should find also a transporter a switch and a chest and a destination So, inside dot lua. Um, in this chapter, I will edit the script from Notepad++ because the editor in version 1.3 uh, doesn't have a great code editor. So it's doable, but I prefer using Notepad++ with Solar Request Editor 1.3. 1.4 1 is not released yet, but uh, if it's already released when you are seeing this video you can uh, you can probably do your script from the editor anyway um like item scripts uh, the the engine will call your script when the map starts and will pass the map object to your script so to retrieve it you have this special Lua syntax three dots to retrieve the, the parameters passed to your script because a, a Lua file is just a f is just a regular function actually the only thing is that there is special syntax to get the parameters okay so the parameter is the map and it will be executed your script will be executed again every time the the hero enters the map so what you want to do is when the map starts you want to hide the chest initially so there is this event map on start till you can see it in the documentation and when the map starts you want to hide the chest so how can you do that how can you access to this particular chest from a map script well actually you have to name your chest we haven't set any name to the chest so for now there is there is no way to refer to the chest from the script but you can uh, you can give a name let's call this um, sword chest because it contains the sword and once you have done that sword chest okay you can access it from the map script just by typing typing its name so you don't have to declare this variable because when you are in a map script all entities that have a name are already registered as variables um, in your script already accessible so sword chest you can access the chest like this and then if you see if you read the documentation you have a lot of functions that are common to all entity types 
all of these and then you have specific function for all each type of entity and the function you want to use in this case is set enabled want to uh, disable the chest set enable is here it it's this function is defined for all uh, type of entities so sort chest set enable false okay no more chest it's really disabled uh, it's not only invisible because i um i can traverse it it still exists um we can enable it back whenever we want and actually this this is what we want to do when the button is pressed so um we are going to need a name for uh, the switch as well uh chest appears switch okay save and to define what happens when a switch is pressed there is an event specific to switches the on activated event called when the switch has just been turned on just appears switch on activated so like the sword like the chest we can access our switch just by typing its name actually the this way of accessing entities from a map script without having to declare them as variables um, is a very nice feature and is it's it only exists in a map script you cannot do this in like in other script like an item script or from your main script but in other scripts you can still access entities of the map by typing the full uh, the full function actually it's uh, map get entity and then the name of your entity so this syntax is just a shortcut to this one when a variable is not declared the engine looks for an entity that has the specified name but only in a map script because it doesn't really make sense in other script entities belong to a map so uh, when the switch is activated we want to enable to enable the chest and we can also play the sound of a chest that appears this sound is of course in the a link to the past resource pack and it's called chest appears you can see the sound in your sound subtree and there is a sound chest appears and one day you will be able to uh, to listen to the sounds and music from the editor but that's not possible for now okay I think it should work yes oh by the way the, the dialogue is not great like this I want to fix the dialogue actually I should fix all of them because uh, the dialogue box the dialogue box has four lines and not three so maybe I can do this very quickly no it's too long because also the, um, the lines are too short all of these dialogues uh, were adapted uh, for the the other dialog box it was much shorter so I will just fix the sword dialog you found a sword of courage use it to vanquish your enemies okay oh
Okay, so there is a problem with line endings in the text editor. So you should you should use Notepad++ if you have the editor in version 1.3. Sword one. Uh, yes, it didn't work. This problem is fixed in the editor 1.4 if you already have it. Okay, so and the last thing is that when you leave the map and come back, of course the chest is gone again. It's gone again because the map was destroyed and recreated and your script of the map was executed again. So this map object is a new one actually, every time you enter the map. Uh, so if you want to keep things, well, what's already automatically saved is the state of the chest. Remember? If you open the chest and come back, okay it's disabled but when you show it again it's still open because the state of the chest is saved. So what you can do is when the map starts you ask the chest, are you open? If sword chest is open then instead of hiding the chest, oops, you want to not exactly do nothing but you want to make your switch look activated. So chest appears switch set activated true. So this function if you read the documentation changes the state of the of the switch but it didn't trigger any sound or any event it, it doesn't trigger this event so that's exactly what we want and otherwise we hide the chest we disable the chest more exactly because you can also hide the chest uh, but that's not what what you want but that's possible if there, also s if there is also a set visible function if you do that the chest will not be displayed but will still be here will still have collision and the, the hero is still able to open it okay so let's try again the chest appears if I don't open it and leave and come back it's is disabled again so that, mm, that's what we want but if we open it and leave and come back it is still open and the button cannot be activated again because it's already activated that's what we have done in this line and if you save the game and quit when you come back, the chest will still be here and still be open because, again, the, the state of the chest is saved in the save game, in the save game file. Uh, so, okay, that's it for this episode, I think. Don't hesitate to put a like to the video, it's always appreciated. And we will see you, I will see you um, next Saturday for the next chapter of the tutorial. Thank you, bye.